Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat here on STV. And the main talking points tonight, Billy King is all set for a loan move to Rangers from Heart of Midlothian. Uh, congratulations to Tony Fitzpatrick. He's the new chief executive of St Mirren Football Club. Uh, we'll also discuss what the four managers had to say earlier today ahead of those two League Cup semi-finals at the weekend. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, our boot room guest today, delighted to say is Frank McAvenny at that age where he's quite comfortable wearing a cardigan Ruffy who was the last Celtic player we were in the company of who was also like Maka a goal scorer and at peace wearing a cardigan. Mm -hmm. uh, was it Mark? Matt McGee? Nope. Matt McGee, it was on. Brian McClare. Oh, oh no, so it was it's Brian it's McClare. Off it. <laughs> oh, it's going off it. I bet so, I can make it look good. Yeah. <laughs> That'll go back. Uh, right. Anyway, it's let's okay. let's cut to the chase. Um, mm -hmm. Billy King. Yeah. That came out of nowhere, and and of course, you know, if that deal goes through, then I think that closes the door on Michael O'Halloran. Yeah, I would think so. It looks as if uh, that is the case. You know, it's it's come right out of the blue. I thought. Uh, Billy King would uh, would figure in the Hearts team uh, eventually. I know he was out with a wee injury there, but certainly, yep, it looks as if there's no money going to be spent and it's a, it's a loan deal. Yeah, well, it gets uh, Billy King playing regular football, you would think, You would think, but I'm just a wee bit concerned about Rangers. This, to, to not get the O'Halloran deal over the line, I just, there's something not right. I mean, if they can't pay the 400 grand, then, you know, there's, you've got to, the supporters have got to ask questions. I mean, why is Mr King saying I'll overspend and I'll do it? You don't want him to overspend, but you come out with a big thing, you know, I'm going to spend money. And if you can't put a deal at £400,000 over the, over the line, which the manager want, I think you're in a big bit of bother to try and keep the manager at the end of the season. Mm, uh, I mean, there's a, a few it's twists. It's good for Billy times. King, sorry, Peter. It's good for Billy King, but if he can't get in the Hearts team, the Rangers supporters will be saying, why? We want them. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's be honest about it here. Um, Mark Warburton suddenly, over the last couple of days, especially after the uh, Morton game, did mention, he said, you know, if we don't get players in, I'm happy with the squad I've got. But um, I think because he's highlighted the fact that they wanted one, two players in, mm -hmm. I think Rangers fans were alerted to the mm -hmm. fact, maybe excited uh, by the fact that their squad would be bolstered the way Hibernia have responded. They've mm -hmm. brought in five players, Ruffy. Yeah, but I mean, any manager would say that, you know, that uh, if you really pulled them aside and said, look, what was your objectives for January? It would be to get these two players. Mm -hmm. uh, he already stated they're the two he wanted. They were for the future, uh, not just short signings. And uh, he made it uh, that that was the two he was going to go for. And as, as Maka said, it looks as if, unfortunately for, for Rangers, it's the finance that's been a stumbling block for these uh, not to go through. I know he said he wasn't going to pay over the odds, but 400,000 isn't paying good. over the odds for mm. uh, no. these two players He's anyway. He's a good player. O'Hallan is a good player, you know, and, and I thought it's a good deal. And he was fitting well because he's not, he's not a prolific goal scorer, but he'll create goals as yeah. well. And he, and he takes all the defenders away that with great, some intelligent runs. And the whack on that would have... You know, they would have loved it because there was a player coming in like that. Yeah, I have to say though, guys, I, I don't see uh, Mark Warburton's hand being forced. Uh, the reason for this is I still think he's got something to prove on the CV here. I mean, uh, you know, they can talk about clubs that potentially he was linked with, whether it was speculation, mm -hmm. whether it was an agent throwing it in there or not. Brentford's one thing, getting Rangers to the Premiership and then competing in there and using mm -hmm. all his managerial skills and his tactical nows that's where his CV starts to gain a bit of credibility for me, Ruffy. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, if he's honest enough, he'll, he'll know that's <laughs> when he's going to get judged. But I think in the same sense as well, uh, it doesn't matter what team you're at, if you're going to achieve something, if it was start to go off the rails a wee bit, I'm not okay, saying it is that. going to go off the rails, if it was going to go off the rails, then the first thing he's going to get hit with from the supporters is, look, why didn't you strengthen in January? And then he'll have to come up with the, the right answers because, uh, mm. as you've said there, Hibs have uh, stated you know that they're in it for the for the long haul. And if they were to catch up, you know, it, it may just turn everything. I don't. It's, it's, what Hibs have done must be a slap in the face to the supporters. I mean, they've made a big statement taking Anthony Stokes. He's a big player. I mean, no matter the problems he had at Celtic, you know, and we're, we're football guys. Anthony Stokes are really, really good player. And he will go there, and that's a statement saying, look, we, we can we can challenge. 
we can really challenge and push Rangers. If they slip up anyway, if they don't get these two, the players might get down hard. The manager might be, you know, I don't know if he's upset, but to, to want a player uh, for 400 grand and not get him, I mean, it's not too much money, as Alan says. Yeah. Um, it's a bit something wrong. Yeah. Uh, Rangers take on Falkirk at the weekend. The one thing that does, I think, Ruffy, always paper over the cracks is if you keep winning. Yeah. It strengthens mm -hmm. the case yeah. for the manager. I mean, um, Falkirk today, they let Kieran Duffy go. They brought in Kevin McCann. Um, but again, they are in the mix. And Peter Houston has said it continually. You know, people have been keeping their eye on Rangers and Hibs, but Falkirk still feel they're yeah, in and contention. That, and, and that's the kind of game that I'm talking about. You know, if things weren't to go well for Rangers at that particular game, you know, I'm not saying Falkirk will win, but if Falkirk were to pop a good display and, and get something out of the game, the first thing the supporters are going to hit on are, why have we not strengthened? Why? We've been here before in January and it's all went pear-shaped. Why we will not learn from our lessons? Why are we not strengthening the side? But you're perfectly right. If Rangers do roll over Falkirk, then everybody will be happy. Yeah. OK, um, let's uh, talk about a man that you know well, uh, Ruffy, and you especially, Maka. Tony Fitzpatrick, Chief yeah. Executive at St Mirren. Couldn't think of a nicer guy. Yeah. Couldn't think of a man that if you uh, you know cut his hand, mm. it would bleed black and yeah. white. I said, I made a statement last year, and I was getting a bit of stick. I wasn't meaning to go in and take, you know... Tails job, not that. I just says, look, the young managers in there, get somebody like Tony Fitzpatrick into the changing room, get him into the club, no matter whether it's the changing room or the club, just get him around the place because he's such a legend. And the young boys, they look up to him. I mean, I still look up to him. And I played, I played beside him, and he'd done everything to me. I mean, he, he picked me up in the morning, came up to the mountain and picked me up and took me, took me to training, made me, got me full time. I never took a, I never took, I couldn't get a wage rise off some money at the time. But Tony went out his way, came up and picked me up in the morning, took me in. And that's it's just the respect well, of the manager. Must, have been, such a, must <laughs> have been a sight some morning. <laughs> I, I was just about to say, I was only a young you, boy. Could you quantify how many times he was there and you were there waiting on him? <laughs> I didn't have to wait, give it a house. I, you know, I, was, I was living with my parents at the time, but it was great for somebody like yeah. Tony to do that. You know, go out his way and and, uh, and just, it was it was good. It was really, really good of him because I didn't, I couldn't, can't afford the car, I was on 50 quid or something. Yeah. But it, it made me the player I was because it meant I got full time football. And, uh, and I went on to do what I'd done. So there's a lot of thanks there for Tony. And he's such a great lad. And, you know, as you say, black and white runs through his veins. So, yeah, good luck to him. Yeah, absolutely. I think mm -hmm. it's a great move. And, yeah. and again, when you're looking for somebody who may well have, um, you know, some good business acumen there as well, Ruffy, but as a person, as an ambassador, oh, uh, yeah, it doesn't probably. get any better. Yeah, Frank's touched on it. And, and that's what happens when uh, you've got a player like that who's a legend. The supporters relate to them. And, and sometimes it will help uh, Alec Ray because mm -hmm. he'll be able to take uh, that side out the road. There'll be a communication between the fans and the club. Uh, and I'm sure he'll be able to smooth if there is any trouble, then uh, he'll be there to sort it out. Yep, absolutely. Um, just uh, before we get to uh, the managers in the League Cup semi-finals, we're obviously discussing uh, the two matches that are taking place this weekend, Ruffy. What do you make of uh, Hearts? Uh, Robbie Nielsen says he's confident uh, that he can keep Osman. So he's on the lookout for a striker to strengthen uh, their squad in this January transfer window. But he, he's had a little pop at uh, a minority of Hearts fans that are dragging the club down. And Anne Budge certainly has mm -hmm. uh, let them know that she's not happy with anybody creating trouble uh, for Hearts. They might actually have to pay more than they should uh, for security now with the yeah. police costs uh, mm -hmm. at the games. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the, the, the worst thing about the whole scenario. It's not the actual people who are causing the mayhem uh, that are suffering. It's the club uh, who are getting maybe fined 30000 40000 and these people are walking free and going down to the, pump, the pub and bumming about what they've done. They've let off a flare. They need to be seen to be something done to them. Yeah, uh, and uh, John Suter, there's a, one mm. bid's gone in. We expect another one um, from Hearts. Yeah, again, it's a, I'm, I'm only looking at it from the outside. They're talking about hundred thousand. You know, I'd, I would be surprised if Dundee United would let them go for that. The young boy seems to be in about for ages, and certainly mm -hmm. Celtic are keeping their eye on him as well. So they might have a wee. Uh, 
tug of war of it, that one. Yeah, and just briefly on this, it could be a big week for clubs making that push for avoiding relegation, mm -hmm. trying to win titles. Yeah, and, and Frank will tell you, it's good <coughs> being in a dressing room and a new guy walks in, there's always a bit of banter going on and it can lift, doesn't matter who you are, mm -hmm. it can lift the whole dressing room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, you should have seen Frank's face when Raphael walked in. Uh, <laughs> OK, uh, we'll have a quick break <laughs> and then we'll discuss the League Cup semi-finals and uh, give you the thoughts of the managers and then get the predictions uh, from the guys <coughs> with regards to who they think uh, is going to win the respective semi-finals. So uh, join us on that. We're also going to talk about uh, Real Madrid. Three cheeky bids for Lionel Messi, uh, but still he said no, thankfully. Uh, we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and Frank McAvenny is our bit room guest today, uh, talking League Cup semi-finals. All four managers face-to-face -face, uh, to talk about the two mouth-watering games over the weekend. Of course, Hibs against St Johnston. Uh, Tommy Wright, uh, certainly not happy with the ticket allocation. I think he let his feelings be known today. He says St Johnston is just another example of them getting the rough end of the stick, as he put it, Ruffy. Yeah, that's an unfortunate one. You know, once you get your semi-final and the final, everybody uh, wants to go and see it. And I think the allocation is obviously based on the crowd that you have throughout the season. Uh, it's a difficult one. Uh, they, were, they were said they could sell the tickets and come back and get another 500. And then when they come back and get the 500, the health and safety said, not where you're going. Uh, we're not going to allow it. So it's a, it's a shame for the people who really wanted to go. It's a wee bit unfair as well, Maka, because this is a club now that has, you know, a, pr a proven track record in the cup game, so you know there's going to be a demand there. Of course they have, and um, and, and Tommy Wright, he's quite he's quite right to be annoyed and vent his anger <coughs> because it's uh, once again it's it's the people that the be all end all the people that are in Scottish football they don't take the the normal punters into consideration. You know it's it's uh, I just I just think that there's more freebies going about and these kind of things than than what and they should be giving the supporters the proper supporters. You know, you know that there's going to be a lot more coming to the, to the, the semi-finals and things like that. But that's, that's that's all part of being in semi-finals. The whole town comes out and and gets behind the club, and and it's uh, and then they're not getting the tickets, which is wrong. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm not knocking you for this, Rafi. I know you mm. think Hibs uh, can win this one, but all the evidence would suggest St Johnston should come out and talk because of that yeah. uh, aforementioned pedigree that they have. They've got mm -hmm. Stephen McLean uh, signed a new deal. He scored goals since he arrived there mm. in 2012, I think it was, um, and and of course. O'Hala and staying mm -hmm. is a bonus at the moment. Yeah, and no, I think if you ask anybody, St Johnson as a team, you wouldn't want to play in a cup tie. Uh, they don't usually give anything away. I just think that uh, they're not playing as well as what they yeah. were. You know, I think a couple of the players have got injuries as well. Hibs seem to be on a wee roll, you know, obviously with Stokes there. Stokes and Cummins together could be a, a good mm -hmm. partnership. I just think everything is going right and that, that can matter in a semi-final but again we've saw games where you think somebody's definitely going to win it and uh, the other team but come up with as a As you game. say they've, they've took a little dip St Johnson mm. but you're, you're not going to tell me that's got nothing to do with it boy O'Halloran the controversy going to Rangers and Does that affect players in the does. team? Of course Mark it does. It, does it? Yeah it'll affect him because he'll be absolutely he'll be absolutely gutted he's not going to Rangers Yeah, there's no doubt in that in my mind mm -hmm. um, because he would have been Listen, it goes on. He'd have been spoke to somebody. Have been one of his mates would have been talking to somebody at Rangers, and they'd have told him that he's definitely going. And then he would have been all hyped up to go, and to get your head round to your staying, um, and they're, they're not willing to pay. Nobody's willing to pay four hundred grand for you. It's a mm. big, it's a big kick in the teeth when you when you think you're a decent player, and he is a decent player. He's worth he's worth that anyway. Yeah, uh, is, there could be another move in it yeah. for him though. It, back it, listen, it could, it could. We we could be talking here, and it could. By next mm -hmm. Monday, Rangers could have took him. So, you know, that's it, it could go right down to the wire. But uh, if they get Billy King, you know, who knows? It? I don't mm -hmm. know if the two could play in the same position. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, <clears throat> well, to be honest with you, I think um, mm -hmm. uh, certainly Billy King will sell more <laughs> shots <laughs> than Michael <laughs> Allen. Oh, yeah. uh, just uh, a thought, yeah, Robbie. Yeah, just a thought. Uh, just you a know? thought. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but, but <laughs> 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 He's right. Tommy Wright's got a lot of arm around him and having to have a chat with him and, and reassure well, you know him that, you know that there are other clubs out there you know. because when you 
you're obviously on X amount of pounds at St Johnson and what's mm -hmm. at Rangers and you think mm -hmm. your long term future and it well, depends you know, on the individual. I'm going to be honest with you that that f his, his wages and that would have all been spoke about by now and, and he would just yeah. for, for that he'd be took away from him and they're bringing in somebody with the name of Billy King it's just yeah. it's yeah. good for well, Rangers it's, it's good for Rangers it's a good PR as stunt but as can, long, can the boy play as long as uh, <laughs> as long as they don't get the surname and the Christian yeah, name yeah, yeah. next stop is yeah. fine um, uh, there'll, be a, uh, there'll be a few there'll be a few, oh, aye, be a few, a few gags like that of course, of course. and Kilmarnock are looking to sign Gary Dicker from <laughs> Kilmarnock <Kamal> <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to Big, he'll be a big sign. <laughs> I kid you not. I looked at it and I said to myself, "Wow, this week is a sub-editor's dream in the newspaper business." But anyway, let's move on. Who do you, but just out of curiosity, who do you think is going to win? He says Hibbs. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Hibbs will beat him. You think Hibbs will win against yeah. St Johnson? Yeah. Okay. I think uh, the way their heads are down at the moment, they've not. But as you said, pedigree semi-final. Yeah. They're not normally good games. I can't remember the last semi-final was a good game. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, but it's, it's all about the result. Yeah. I, I didn't raise my voice as if to say, don't be so stupid. I know. Uh, I know, just, but it's, it's all about... It's unusual to see two guys opting for the championship semi side finals. over a team with a, a, a good pedigree mm -hmm. in cup. That's yeah, I, just think, I just think that the, the turning point was Anthony Stokes signing. I think it's a great signing for Hibs. Yeah. I really do. I think he's, he brings other players into the game and he can score goals. Yeah. OK. Um, Ronnie Dyla has uh, mentioned that he didn't mention the treble to the players last year. He certainly not mentioned it this year. I think he mentioned it a few times in the press. I think so. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> there was certainly about yeah. a good five or six times that yeah. I actually thought, "Oh, here we go, treble uh, again." Uh, well, you know, there's a reason. There's a reason. It's only been won so many times with some of the greats at Celtic, but it's it's hard to do. You just, you if you don't. And Celtic this year. I mean, if they turn up. The win easily. I think the, there's no doubt now. If the Celtic that we know that can play football turn up at the weekend, then they'll beat <coughs> Ross County. There's no doubt about that. But they've been known not to turn up at games, and it just needs one or two not to, not to click, and the whole team it, it goes through the team. So, you know, I, I just don't think there's, there'll be any doubt. Now, they can't lose this game. It's the semi-final. To be honest, is, is a horrible thing. It's worse to lose the semi-final than what it is to lose the final. You know, because you've got there. And uh, some of these Celtic boys, the, the new ones for the DNA they'll be coming in and they'll be wanting to, you know, like, because um, all the boys Armstrong and that, they all want to get to the final. So yeah. it's a big day. Um, I, I don't see any, I just don't see any chance with Ross County, but stranger things have happened. Well, if there is a bonus, uh, mm -hmm. Ruffy, uh, Liam <coughs> Boyce could mm -hmm. be back. Uh, in mm -hmm. the striking role and he knows the way to go and that I think would be a huge lift we're talking about players reacting to yeah. someone going yeah. someone mm -hmm. staying someone coming back from injury who's got a great striking pedigree yeah I think uh, I think it was Alan Archibald we did uh, the other day there and he was saying that Boyce and Curran are a handful for any defence you know and that's what Ross County need to do they need to get at the Celtic defence and put them under pressure because there's a lot of that team the Celtic team uh, haven't been in this scenario before no. semi-final and let's Scott Brown's not there, McGrew's not there, so Ross County would have to go ahead, I think, you know, to put pressure on Celtic to see I how the younger players are going to I react. I don't think, you know, Johansson and McGregor, they're not, they're not centre midfield players. You know, they were, no, matter, no matter how many times you play them in there, they're not, they're, they are not and they'll never be. Yeah holding midfield players to them, so they've got to go wide, the yeah. two boys. And well, to be honest with you, Mike, yeah. I looked at a picture the other day there in the newspaper, I think Celtic had a choice of about, what, yeah. 10 I midfielders in well, there? Seen that. Too many. I've seen that, they're coming, the boy coming up from Man City, apparently. I'm thinking, that's the last place, that's the last position that Celtic need. You know, but saying that, let's be honest, I've heard down the road he's a quality, quality player. Yeah. If he was to come up here, then there's, you know, there's not a lot, of, I think there's a lot of good players in the Celtic team, but I don't see that quality. That, that's going to get you into Europe and, and challenging for in European games rather than just Scottish domestic games. Yeah, OK, the way they're playing <coughs> Celtic yeah. for you? Yes, yes. Ruffy? Celtic for me, yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, I always like to look at uh, some other stories that are gathering. And, and, and again, um, you, you have a bit of fun on uh, some of the uh, stories that emerge 
players uh, mm. signing for clubs and what have you. But uh, I like the story from Real Madrid uh, that they tried to uh, <laughs> see if Messi would uh, join them from Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, Rafi, but uh, you know, they'd be throwing more than a pig's head down at Lionel Messi <laughs> if he did what Luis Figo did all those years ago. Yeah, uh, that, it's, uh -huh. it's just too near the bone, isn't it, uh -huh. to, for that move to happen? But uh, it's just now people are now talking about it. You know, we all know he loves Barcelona. But it'll be interesting. I don't know what other clubs are out there. He's got, he's got a big what tax bill. He's there, got yeah. a big tax bill. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. He's got but, his dad does uh, a few bobs as I mean, well. What, what so. clubs are we talking about could attract him? Oh, Man City. Man City. I, I just Chelsea. don't see. I think he's one of those think, boys that will end his career at Barcelona. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but the other <clears> thing is, they're not they're not so much now because Neymar and Suarez. You know, that they're not apparently... The biggest shock I had a couple of months ago when he was out injured is they're not too bothered about it because they've got... Suarez and Neymar, yeah. whereas last year, the, the last decade, he's, he's been magnificent. Yeah. Still, uh, to me, he's still the best player and he makes everything click. I'll be honest Barcelona. with you, Mac, I don't believe everything you read. Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't no, say you goodbye don't to a guy that. like Messi and not miss him. Oh. And just on that, I'll tell you, I was watching yeah. a player last night that could easily be a star for Real Madrid, Rafi, Sergio Aguero. Yeah, he looks as if he could make that step up. Uh, <laughs> Just, <laughs> but it would be a step up. But yeah. it was, you would, you would say, it'd be a success. Uh, he, he would uh, be a success. He's one of the best strikers. He's one of the best strikers in the world at the moment. I was going to say, to you, you there's, a great, that. there's a great bit of confirmation for him. Uh, he looks as if he could make the uh, step yeah, up. That's a goalkeeper talk. Thanks to Maka. Thanks to Ruffy. <laughs> Good night.